With the release of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 now in theaters, it's time to dive in and rank all seven Mission Impossible films from worst to best, including this brand new one. This is one of the coolest action franchises that we've ever gotten. And just as a point of reference, I like to love a lot of this franchise. So this was a really hard ranking. I went back and forth, back and forth on certain films on this. But the most important part about this conversation is definitely seeing your guys' thoughts. So make sure to leave your ranking down below in the comment section. And if you want a more more in-depth review on Dead Reckoning Part 1. I have already posted my full review on that. You can go check that out down below in the description or above in the card. But without further ado, let's get into this ranking. I mean, down on my number seven is Mission Impossible 2. I think for a lot of people, this will most likely be their least favorite. But I, what I will say actually for Mission Impossible 2's defense is I actually don't think this is a bad movie. I, I went into this thinking, oh God, I do not want to revisit this one. It's been years. And I revisited it and I was like, yeah, that was fun. It was fun. It's a John Woo action film. What else is there to say? Plus, it has Thandi Newton in here as, like, his girl, and I love Newton. I think she's phenomenal in Westworld. I love when she shows up in things, and I thought she was phenomenal in this. I thought she kicked a lot of major ass. Primarily, when you look at that performance and everything that comes entitled with it, that was some of the stuff that I was most impressed with within Mission Impossible 2, and I actually think, for me, what makes this film fun is the actual action of it all. John Woo, of course, makes action in such a stylized way and Mission Impossible 2 is absolutely all of that this just feels like a high octane thrill ride that at times is a little bit forgettable when it comes down to the actual story I cannot tell you what this story was about if you asked I, I literally watched this like two weeks ago and I could not tell you what had happened in here so in some ways this is a very forgettable movie and in other ways there's a lot of fun to be had with it I enjoyed it when I was watching it but on kind of thinking back on it, I don't remember it at all. Number six, this is going to be a hot take for a lot of you guys. So brace yourself at my number six, the first Mission Impossible film. I've never been a huge fan of it, but I know a lot of you guys are. And I think that is just because I'm not a huge fan of Brian De Palma as a director. I like a lot of the stylistic choices that he does. I love the Dutch angles. I actually love the paranoia thriller that he went with this. Because when this franchise was developed, this was not just a straight action franchise. This first film is more of a Hitchcockian thriller than anything else. I think for me, that is actually one of the reasons that this film works so well. Sadly, though, the pacing is very off. And I also find that the story itself is kind of lackluster. I love the twists and turns in the very beginning of how Ethan Hunt and how it makes him literally much go on his own. But the villain is forgettable. The twist is predictable. And I think everything towards the third act is just a little bit of a letdown. But when you get into that second part where he's like kind of coming down, he has to like not sweat. He has to be quiet. That entire stunt, while obviously played in a very calm environment probably still feels intense and I really love how Brian De Palma did shoot this film and I like the style that he went for and I actually think it's unique how this film really much they took a lot of essence from this and put it into Dead Reckoning which I think Dead Reckoning does a lot better which might be blasphemy for some of you guys but i thought this first mission impossible film was a solid start to this all and i enjoy it for what it is and i'm at number five another hot take primarily but that is mission impossible ghost protocol this was the hardest like my five through three i swapped around forever till i sat down this morning i was like this is my definitive list my number five is ghost protocol i love this movie but when I had to compare it to everything else, this is the one that after the entire Bridge Khalifa climbing the tower sequence, I don't remember the rest of the film. Um, I actually find that the story and the villain in here are probably some of the weakest of the entire franchise. But where that makes up for it all is in the team aspect. And I think Brad Bird did such an excellent job creating and bringing back that old flair from the original Mission Impossible show. But also bringing that flair and bringing it to the modern era. Whether it is with this team. I love how Benji is more on this mission and everything of that nature. But alongside having Benji here, it's having Jeremy Renner join them. And Jeremy Renner, I think, for me, was a great addition to the Mission Impossible franchise. And for people who don't know, he was actually supposed to take over the entire Mission Impossible franchise after Ghost Protocol. That ended up not happening. And from here on out, it has become still Tom Cruise's franchise through and throughout. And I think Ghost Protocol, there's a lot of great moments to it. 
But it's one of those films that I just enjoy for what it is, and I enjoy the team banter. I think this is one of the best teams that they've had for the Mission Impossible franchise. I also really love the choice of almost all the devices and technology that they have to use. Some way in shape and form does not work and always glitches out. I think that's something that we don't see in a lot of spy films nowadays, and I think what Brad Bird was able to add into that essence really worked. This is just an overall blast of a time at the theaters that I think harkens back to the old school Mission Impossible show at the same time bringing it into the modern day. If this film just had a stronger villain and primarily a stronger third act, I think I'd be a lot higher on this movie, but I really love the tie-ins and specifically how Jeremy Renner ties into Ethan Hunt's past as well. Brings me down to my number four, which is Mission Impossible 3. I have always really liked Mission Impossible 3, but over the last like five to six years, I have fallen in love with this. And a lot of that might be because of how J.J. Abrams actually edited this movie. It feels very much in the way of how he had edited Alias back in the day. But in a, that's kind of a good thing, I think, because the frenetic pacing, the frenetic editing of this really plays up to Ethan Hunt's storyline, but as well as Philip Seymour Hoffman's performance, which is one of the main reasons that this film is even in my top four, is because Hoffman's villain is my second favorite, maybe even my number one of this entire franchise. At least on a performance level, he is absolutely insane. He is menacing, he is haunting, and he is absolutely terrifying in that performance. And I found for me, Ethan Hunt's kind of back and forth on that and the way that they kind of give a personal level to him with his future wife. I can't remember if it's a future wife or girlfriend, but I really liked how they did that. Maybe they didn't have the best chemistry, but it actually gave a little bit more development to Ethan Hunt as a character to where at this point, one and two had not done anything for us. And I think three is one of those important milestones in his career to truly give us all of that. And I found that Mission Impossible 3 was about everything that I needed this franchise to be. The action is frenetic. It's an intense thrill ride. And that sequence between when Ethan Hunt is holding Philip Seymour Hoffman's character over the airplane trying to interrogate him, it, it just makes for everything. And I love the twists and turns all alongside this film. And at my number three is Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. For a while, I didn't go back to this one too, all too often because I always found it to be a little bit forgettable after the opera sequence. But rewatching it this time, I'm not going to lie, I actually put it back on a couple days later just to rewatch it again because it's such an, it's so much fun. Like every single one of the stunts in here, whether it's the opening airplane sequence to the motorcycle sequence to everything in here uh but for me what actually really works in here is while you have the stunts i think this is one of the few films that actually does harken back again to that very first mission impossible film with that thriller that paranoia aspect who can you trust who can't you trust ethan hunt doesn't know who to trust he's trusting benji he's bringing benji here and i really like how this is kind of a him and benji story all alongside of it but also the fact that they introduce rebecca ferguson in this film who for me i think is the best character in the entire mission impossible franchise I said what I said. I love her performance in this movie. I think she's great. I love the character and the way that she's portraying it. I also love how Jeremy Renner's trying to have their back and how Alec Baldwin's going against them and how the IMF shouldn't be a thing. You know, it's the typical story we've seen in Mission Impossible before, but the way that Christopher McQuarrie is able to enhance that and take it to that next level really works. And I think Rogue Nation plays out in such a phenomenal way, whether it's the action set pieces, but it's also the story alongside those action sequences that make the entire film memorable as you go through it and that for me is where this film really started to touch into what this franchise needed to be which brings us you know to my next film at my number two it is mission impossible dead reckoning part one which i will say right now i didn't feel comfortable putting this at my number one mostly because i think my number one is one of the best action films of all time but i also think dead reckoning could potentially hit that but since this is a part one I need to see how part two goes because there's a couple things that I'm a little bit not hit or miss on. Like I loved them, but if part two doesn't execute it in a way that I think they should, or I think that it could help influence this a little bit better, then it can deter part one. But part one for me is a love letter to the entire Mission Impossible franchise because it has the best elements of every single film that we've seen thus far from other directors. The paranoia thriller of the first film. The heavy action of the second film, the shootouts. The third film's heavy frenetic editing. Like, you have that frenetic editing of the third film mixed in with the paranoia thriller of the first one, which makes this film really white knuckling intensity. And then you bring into the great team aspect of Ghost Protocol, as well as the stunts 
and the tone of Rogue Nation and Fallout. And you mix all that together. And if you walk that nice little line, Christopher McQuarrie proves here why he is a trade of all hands. And I think that's actually the thing that surprised me the most is I think we forget how great of a writer that Christopher McQuarrie is and we see it in Dead Reckoning why he is such a great writer. The fact that, you know, I went into this film very nervous because I thought it was just going to be most about the stunts and the story was going to be forgettable, but I found that the story was actually one of my favorites in the entire franchise. It's very Bond-esque, specifically in kind of some of its cheesy manner, and sometimes it does come off across cheesy, but it feels very topical and very haunting and terrifying, specifically when you find out what the actual story and the villain is. I don't want to get into that in here. I didn't get into it in my non-spoiler review. I don't want to get into it here because I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen the film yet, but it's haunting and terrifying for what is into the unknown out there, and I think it was played out in a very realistic capability but also one of the things that surprised me the most was while the stunts were awesome, like the motorcycle cliff jumping or the train fighting sequence, it also goes down to just a pure, simple cat and mouse game chase in an entire airport sequence, which like blew my mind on how intense it was. And like Rebecca Ferguson is obviously incredible in here. Tom Cruise is incredible in here. Palm Clementine, who we've seen it as, of course, Mantis, is phenomenal in here. She plays like very much Philip Seymour Hoffman intensity and hauntingness and just like, I don't care. I'm just going to beat you in. Um, she's great. Uh, Essie Morales is fantastic as the main villain. Vanessa Kirby is also always great. Uh, Simon Pegg is always great. But the big standout of this is Haley Atwell. And her character arc in here is something that we have always heard about in Mission Impossible films, but we've never actually seen. And it, for me, is actually one of my favorite parts of the entire film. I'm not going to lie. And I know that they've been talking that this is the end of the Mission Impossible franchise. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Because I think this is the end of Ethan Hunt's story. Part 1 and Part 2 will be. And I'm willing to bet that Haley Atwell takes over the franchise afterwards. And I'm not opposed to that. Specifically in the way that they set her up in here. She's so freaking good. I loved it so much. And now at my number one, it is Mission Impossible Fallout. One of the best action films I've ever watched in my entire life. When this film had premiered, I was not the biggest fan of the Mission Impossible franchise. I had rewatched them all. I enjoyed them for what they were. I really like Road Nation. I really like 3. And I enjoyed Pro Ghost Protocol. But I thought this is going to be another Mission Impossible film. I'm going to enjoy it and walk out. And I walked out going, holy shit, that was one of the best films I've seen in a long time. Um, it was one of my favorite films of that year. And a lot of that just goes down to the actual story of it all. This is still my favorite story in this franchise. The way that Henry Cavill's whole entire place plays out in there. I love the every single action sequence and the stunts. The halo jump sequence is still mind-blowing to me. The entire helicopter f sequence at towards the very back half. But this is just a film that you feel that espionage. You feel how all the characters are playing out. And you feel that this is Ethan Hunt's like last ride in some way, shape, and form. I think the way they actually use Rogue Nation as a jumping point to Fallout is one of my favorite aspects of it. But the reason that Fallout works so well is because... It never lets up on the pacing from the very opening sequence, which Mission Impossible films typically always have a great opening action set piece or a great opening sequence that gets you into the vibe of the entire film. This was one that actually, as I'm watching it, I'm sitting there like, holy shit, this is like amazing. And I'm sitting there like, okay, this is intense. It's already setting up the stakes. And then, you know, the plutonium gets stolen. And how does that play out into the next part? what betrayals will happen, what betrayals won't happen, what action scenes, what characters will go about. Fallout is a wild ride, and while it might be predictable in some instances, it's one that's just top-tier action from top to bottom. And I think Christopher McQuarrie, I, I don't know if he'll be able to outdo himself with part two, but if part one is the any way to speak, maybe they will. And with that said, that is my Mission Impossible ranking. Thank you so much for guys for clicking on this. Next week's going to be a little bit of a weird week because I have San Diego Comic-Con and Barbie and Oppenheimer screeners are the same night. So I'm planning on watching Oppenheimer first. I'm watching Barbie that weekend. We'll also have a Christopher Nolan and Greta Gerwig ranking pretty soon after that. I'm probably planning that even that weekend or the week after. But other than that, guys, thank you so much again for watching this. And of course, until next time, Stay classy.